What is going on, Snappers? It is Jed, aka Mr. Flow himself. Welcome to the Flow Zone. Today we got a spicy deck to showcase, and I have the most fun playing this archetype because your boy likes to gamble with R and G, and that is discard. When things hit right for this deck, it is the most satisfying, just like watching those ASMR videos. What makes this version spicy is the inclusion of big homie Leech, and since he isn't that prevalent in the meta at the moment because of the decreased usage of Thanos. It is the biggest FU card that you can play, especially inside a discard archetype. Biggest downside playing him on turn 5 is that you lose tempo trying to stack your Morbius and setting up the perfect Dracula. The only ideal situation to play Leech is when you have early cut swarms and a Lockjaw on the board on turn 3. Then on turn 5, if you have Modok in hand and leech is still in your deck you want to rotate those two swarms in the lockjaw lane play modok on another lane and hopefully a leech pops out and pays dividends the second ideal play is to rotate the swarms early on turn four if you have nothing else to play which is ideally dracula and hopefully an early leech pops out enough talking let's get on to the gameplay It seems like we're pretty set in the Morbius lane here. So I'm just going to leave that lane alone. And I'm just going to focus on um, building up the left lane here. Because once we play Modok, our Morbius is going to be big. And they can't really contest Quantum Realm because it'll set their base power to 2. And that place benefits us more than them. So we're just going to fight for left. We're going to move all our power left. We're not going to move the sunspot just in case they have like a, a Nova and a Killmonger combo, which is going to ruin our power, our total power in the left lane. So we're just going to move the Lady Sif and play the Modok so we can stack our Morbius and our Apocalypse. After the Modoc proc, our Morbius is going to be 10 on top of the end of play Dracula, which is going to add another 2, which is going to be a total of 12 right and a hell of a power left. And that's why we didn't add the, the Killmonger left here. Like I said before, he couldn't contest uh, right here. So this is just a murder. Just a murder. Welcome Sandwave to the ass kicking highlights. On to the next game. Let's get it. What's up Angel Dust? Welcome to the not so ass kicking highlights. This is not a win. This is actually a, uh, a tie that I like to showcase to you guys and why Leech was really effective in this game. Let's see, we just got ice box with our um, sunspot here. We just got iced, which is pretty bad. Play more via sound curve, of course, and we would rather play lockjaw right here, and then possibly a lady sif in that lockjaw lane next turn. Electro, so you gotta think about ramp a ramp deck or a Galactus deck. And this is what I mentioned before about rotating your cards early on turn four. I didn't have early cut swarm, so I had to manage Galactus deck. So I had to manage um, just putting in a sunspot and a swarm instead. So he's going to play his Galactus right side, if he has Galactus. And watch this leech pop out. Boom! This is what I'm trying to tell you guys, which is the biggest FU card in this archetype, because you won't expect it. So... He doesn't have a Galactus. I forgot 
he tops that Galactus, but his death is off, his null is off, Shang-Chi, and all that. So you can't really play anything, which was which is what I was thinking at the time. And we decide to not play anything because if you play America Chavez, our swarm might pop back up, which is not ideal, and our sunspot would won't absorb energy. Colleen Wing is gonna waste energy as well, so I just decided to um, float and get the sunspot to uh, 12 here. And uh, he can't really, at the time I wasn't really thinking what he could play because I thought I shut everything off. He just got lucky that he top deck Galactus, which is insane luck. He has a destroyer. The effectiveness of Leech, boys. GG's Angel Dust. He almost had me. If I didn't have Leech in this game, I would have lost. Welcome Ice Cold, GG's, welcome to the ass kicking highlights. Go play Sunspot here, absorb some um, energy. If we don't pull a Colleen Wing on turn two, we will float. But I believe this game, our RNG was just, this is the optimal game here. One of the most optimal games here. We got an early cut swarm on turn two, which is perfect. Can't write a better story than that. Oh my gosh, look at this RNG, guys. Lady Sif on three, Dracula on turn two, which is why I snapped. We're probably gonna support. We're gonna put Lady Sif left. Support the Sunspot in terms of power. We're probably thinking about Dracula right. His right lane's already clogged, so we're gonna attack his right. We got a leech, which is perfect. We're going to play leech flat out on the board here because we have early cut swarms and we could spread nine power across the board here. What I was thinking during this time is playing leech on the uh, left lane because we can't play big house. So we play leech left. Because we want to set up the log jaw and two swarm rotations middle and possibly possibly uh, get some more additional discards here to make our Dracula stronger. Boom, leech. So I possibly shut off his Thanos that he can't play or Maybe a, a devil dino he can't play. So he just got, he settled down with just playing a Marvel, which is not the ideal play for him. He's probably looking to dino me. Boom, chef's kiss. Mm. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at this. Can't write a better story than this, guys. Boom. Welcome to the ass kicking highlights. Victory. Egg banger, boys. Let's get it. On to the next game. Welcome, noob, to the ass kicking highlights. GG's noob. We have nothing to play here. And we get iced. And Leech is unplayable for us. Carmitage, which is big for our Lady Sif, that we might play on turn three. But did we play? I, we did play Lady Sif on Carmitage here. It kind of sucks to get Leech in hand in your starting hand because 
ideally you want to rotate into leech on the lockjaw lane so it's kind of hard to play leech like a solo just flat out because like i said in my intro it's um it's hard to stack your morbius and set up the dracula perfectly if you just lay out the lay out the leech on curve on five because ideally you want to play modok or any type of discard like hell cow or on five Lady Sif, Calling Wing on 5. So we get checkmated right here on Lady Sif. Because he cosmoed us. And we're going to support the uh, Lady Sif. By placing a Dracula. Kamatash to us is useless for us now. So we just put our big dogs in there. Once people see a Dracula, they kind of avoid that lane. Is there, especially in a discard archetype because it can go upwards of 30 power sometimes I've had games where it was almost like 50 because of Karma Taj so it'd be wise from not to um, contest that lane by the looks of his uh, deck he has like a Dracula Zoo with like a What's that dude's name? Uh, Kazar. Infinite. He just played his Red Skull, so he can't really um, absorb the Red Skull on a Dracula lane. I believe he played the Dracula left here to try to fight for this. The mistake I did doing... Uh, the mistake I did here was playing America Chavez left instead of the Apocalypse. Because you know already that, like what I said before, that everybody avoids the Dracula lane. So you just want to put big power left and then let the Dracula absorb Chavez. So he has a 33% chance of hitting the Infinite here. I hit the Apocalypse of course, which will be 16 and he gets the Gazar. Easy win for us, a little bit lucky on our end, but a win is a win. GG's. Welcome nowhere to the ass kicking highlights. Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, interesting. So what I'm thinking here is maybe playing slow on the discard right here. Because he's going to be looking to um, Shang-Chi or Morbius once he hits upwards of 10. 10 power here can't really play the choline wing because it might hit the morbius we want to guarantee the hit on the swarm here you really want to be thinking about the next play which is my which is what did i do lock jaw and then choline wing we're gonna play the lock jaw middle here probably rotate into choline wing he has our lockjaw. So a monster island. He can either shang me left when the Morbius hits 10, or he can hit the monster on the right side. It'll be hard for him to decide which one to hit. Because I can attack every lane here. He has something that I can shang chi. Thank you for the Shang-Chi, sir. Shout out to Daily Bugle. And what a beautiful apocalypse. Wow. Lady Sif play. That's money. This is what we want. And we do a Shang-Chi into maybe a swarm here. And then see what surprise we get off of the Lockjaw. This is going to put a lot of pressure on him because he can't really contest middle anymore after I kill him after I kill this dark hog Let's see he's thinking he's thinking I could have shang right but I'd rather rotate the shang mistake big mistake on his part because he did not play the dark hog it was rotated so that's why the Mystique did not copy. This would have been a closer game if he played Dark Hawk and Mystique copied. But it did not. 
Alright, let's get a rotation in. Hell Cal. Leech is out. Modok is out. Our Marbius is 10. It is shangable. So it is up to him to decide which one to shang. But he is checkmated. Because I can play anywhere I want. I can support my left lane. If he shangs, that'll add 3 on the left side. Which will be uh, 5 on the left on the opponent's side. Maybe he might add like a lizard. Should be like seven. Can okay, add some support right here. I'm kind of scared to play the apocalypse, but I think either way, we would have won if we played apocalypse right. And he shanked right, we would still win left. If we put apocalypse left and he shanked monster, we still won a one. I would have played my swarms uh, right side to win. What's going on, Magneto? GG's. Welcome to my ass kicking highlights. Can't be a complete video without showing a ass whooping of my own because that is the realistic side of the game. This was definitely a retreat game. I just want to showcase to you guys. If I was not infinite, I would definitely retreat. I was just, um,. Limit testing, as people would say. Once you hit infinite, you get this certain ego where you can do anything you want. Get the Morbius middle here. Every time I see a sunspot and then lizard on two, you automatically think Shuri. Degenerate Shuri, you got no skill. Oh man. They really buffed her. Crazy, man. What are you doing, second dinner? All right, Magneto's thinking. Puts the Cosmo. I told you, Shishiri. I'm gonna put a big units um, left here. Put it big, boys. Ah, straight degenerate. If I was him, I would have snapped. I would have snapped turn one. So it was kind of a waste of a Dracula because the left lane he was trying to comp that we're trying to compete for is not that strong. Uh, we're gonna rotate the leech here. I already knew I lost. We're just gonna rotate the leech here, and maybe we hit something important like their Taskmaster, or their She Hulk, anything like that. He floats. Which means he doesn't have the red skull. Eh, a Moda goes middle, which kind of sucks. In hindsight, maybe a, maybe like a 10% chance I would have won if I played Modok in the Lockjaw lane. It'll hit all the cards. Maybe Morbius would be 10 ish right now. Maybe I could have supported the middle lane by playing like a Colleen Wing or something in there. You guys, you guys soon see how close the middle lane was. He can't play Taskmaster middle because Cosmo's there. He think he won middle, that's why he'll be going all in right. In hindsight though, maybe I should have competed for middle here. Watch. Just watch how close this game was. That's what I like to tell myself. Plays the 80 Polaris and the Tatiana. Bust it down. Chavez is gone. Man, I feel like Morbius would have tied. Maybe it would have won by one here. Look how close this game was. Ugh. 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 Could I have won? I'm not sure, dude. If I put it supporting characters middle, I maybe would have won by one. I doubt it, but GG's Magneto. 
Thanks for the ass whooping.